Happy <laughs> Halloween, everyone. It is uh, October 31st. Happy Halloween. Yeah. And so uh, we're just sitting here chatting a bit about days gone by. Hey, there we are. Nice. Nice. Um, I was going to figure out why my the screen back there is so blown out. We'll figure that out in a little bit. Um, but yeah, it is, uh, uh, it is the season for, um, for frights and screams. Andy. Andy. Yes. <laughs> so now here's the thing. Um, uh, do you get any kids where you are like in a normal year? Uh, me? No, I'm in an apartment building. If there were somebody knocking on my door trick or treat, I'd be uh, going, where's my gun? <laughs> no. Yeah. no, seriously, no. there's no, no, no kids in my building. We, we at the, the building that we lived in before, um, we used to ask and say, are there any kids? And they would say, um, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's yeah. My, my my lady from my lady friend is is pounding on the door saying trick or treat. Oh, come in. Trick or treat. Have some crunch. There we go. Trick or treat. Awesome. Well, that's as she's many... wearing. I'm just. She's wearing. I'm just here for the booze. Ghost nice. T-shirt. Mm -hmm. My yeah. favorite T-shirt uh, for the season is. Um, this is my costume. I'm an alien in disguise. You know? <laughs> I'm actually an alien. This is my human costume or whatever. Um, but yeah. So no, how about you? Do you have kids? No. Do you I, have kids? Well, yeah. th there are kids in the neighborhood, but I live in like the basement of the, the condo uh, facility. So uh, you have to like go into a door, go down um, uh, in, you know, in, into the uh, uh, this lower floor. And nobody does that because they don't want to send their kids down there. <laughs> it's like, eh, it's easier to just, you know, do the ones out front. Never see little Susie again. Exactly, yeah. Um, <laughs> down and, to the uh, other world. Yeah, and uh, like all the folks, in, and there's like four people in my, it's not only like two or three stories. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, there are no kids like in this unit, basically. So uh, we don't really get much, right. you know, coming, coming uh, in and out, so. One of those things. It's a shame because the last place I lived, um, I was in a, a neighborhood of townhouses and there were a bunch of kids. So I would get 20, 30, oh, 40 kids, uh, you know, every every Halloween. Um, and so that was fun. Wow. You know, they'd actually come over and they'd have their costumes on wow. and, you know, they'd, they'd do the whole trick-or-treat thing. And um, Yeah, there was, there, was one there was one Halloween when we were coming up, went, walking up one of the streets, coming back home. And... Um, was cathedral i think and all these parents had bought way too much candy and it was like oh. that one section of the neighborhood where all the kids are so all the kids had gone through like three or four times and mm. you know they're young so they need to be taken out so it was nine o'clock at night so we had a whole bunch of parents with like buckets of candy going please please have a five-year-old please sure <laughs> sure <laughs> I will not say no. I've got to remember that. My, yeah. My diabetes is hungry, please. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take advantage of CVS tomorrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> with all of the Halloween candy at 25 or 75% off. Mm -hmm. you know, just uh, get that. you got to be careful because you walk in there like, oh, this is cheap, so I will buy 10 pounds of it. It's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> And they'll all be gone by the end of the evening. <laughs> that, that's the thing. You know? <laughs> yeah, and those that, those are my meals for the next three days. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but um, Bloodlust is your favorite vampire film. That's cool, Passion Nine. Unfortunately, we will not be talking about Bloodlust tonight. We'll be talking about the original anime film here in a little bit. Um, but uh, that 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 is really cool. Yeah, <laughs> those are two very different films. Um, it's interesting yeah, because, uh, you know, Vampire Hunter D is one of those, those franchises, I guess is the right term, even though there's not that much out there. That's just kind of been in kind of the anime zeitgeist is one of those great classic sort of horror films. Yeah. Um, we, yeah, when we were talking about it, I was really did not realize how much of a backlog there was on other stuff. Mm. 
it was Vampire Hunter D with all the novels and all that. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah. So I just went through Helsing last night. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. The 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 first the the first series, not not the one, um, not 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 the one with the uh, Nazis and Zeppelins, which are interesting. I like I like the first the, the first series better, but. You know, just kind of watching it and just kind of going, just watching through the whole thing and, and just kind of just loving the music at the beginning of it. And um, just Luke Hard, just, he just doesn't care. You know, he's like, honey, <laughs> he just doesn't care, you know. He just doesn't yeah. care. It, it, it's, it was just, it was just, I, 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 you know, I said this in a video last week about Helsing, which was that, you know, it, it's more of a modern gothic thing for me mm. and I, I really enjoyed that and it's not your you know it's it's <clears throat> if you like vampires and, and gothic stuff there's you know good veins of that in here mm. and the, my favorite episode is the episode where police girl becomes police girl mm. um because that whole that whole episode of just you know going out to his county town tiny little township hamlet really mm. and it's the one church on the hill and everything is corrupted around it mm. and it's just makes for a great story and that one particular episode for me is just one great little encapsulated story it's really cool mm -hmm. yeah um and man um that's a great question i thought there was a manga as well and it, it, obviously it was based on light novels um <laughs> um but i thought there was a manga adaptation at one point um there, uh, there is, mm -hmm. there is, but it all started from the novels. Okay, um, yeah, there there was a yeah. long adaptation starting in two thousand and seven. Uh, so that that makes sense. Hideyuki Kikuchi. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. Uh, he of of many things fame. Uh, Dark Sider Blues and. Demon City Shinjuku, which would be another good Halloween anime, I think. Indeed. Um, <laughs> um, What's funny is that on Retro Crush, you actually have to sign in your age oh, to see some of these movies. Mm -hmm. And Shinjuku, uh, Demon City Shinjuku is one of them, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, Although it makes me laugh. That, that one makes me laugh mm -hmm. for some reason. Um, that, that particular anime is just like oh. really off the rails at, <laughs> at some point yeah yeah oh they, shinjuku is is great fun because they know exactly what they're trying to do and they just do that to 11 right like let's, yeah. let's just <laughs> do this you know as full scale as we possibly can um and it's not your typical storyline but it's, it's great You're right um uh interesting um Oh, that is interesting. Um, the Vampire Hunter D manga was financed by Digital Manga Publishing. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, so it was, that? it was essentially, it, it was not an original Japanese <clears throat> production. Like they contacted Kikuchi and said, would you do this manga for us? Um, so that's really interesting. It, it was, you know essentially an American production. Wow. Um, obviously some things are switched around a little bit. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it was released in the U.S. Like it, it was, I think it was uh, primarily released in the U.S. Because it was... Uh, it, it, that's right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it was made by a U.S. company. That's fast. I wonder if there's a Japanese version. Like that's, that's bizarre. <laughs> right. Man. How weird. Um... It's another well, two thousand seven, yeah, two thousand seven. So, I mean, yeah, manga is hot. Um, there, there would have been enough money and interest to, to go, and it's a great example of how this franchise is just, you know, it has that pedigree. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, no. Um, Helsing's fascinating. I, I haven't, I have not seen very much of Helsing, and I need to. Um, yeah. But uh, I remember Crispin Freeman being interviewed about that once. He's the voice of Ali Card in the English dub. Right. And um, somebody basically asked him, so what's the deal with Ali Card? Like, what's his motivation? Um, and Freeman said, it's simple. He's bored. 
He's, you know, he's been around forever, and he just wants to stir the pot and see what happens. Um, and boy, mm. does he stir the pot. <laughs> boy, does he stir the pot. He, he, uh, oh my goodness. He, uh, there's great, there's just great scenes where he just, one of the boredom is that he wants to, the reason why he's fighting vampires is, mm-hmm. is part of a, a, a debt that he decided to enter into with the, the Helsing organization. Mm. Oh, hey, there's John. Yeah. And, um, but he really there's... is looking to fight a master vampire like himself. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, you know, that kind of thing. And he's constantly disappointed. So he just kind of goes on these, goes, he just kind of goes, okay, I killed these vampires. You know what? I need a rampage. Okay, let's go start killing people. <laughs> and he just, just goes off. And, and, mm. and then, um, Sarah, the she police girl comes in. And she's just like, "Calm down, calm down. Let's <laughs> let's, let's let's not do this. Let's not do this." We're talking Helsing. 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 I watched the wrong film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've not seen any of the Helsing either. Now, this one I had seen before, okay. and I, I alluded mm-hmm. to. Sorry, look at my ear. My ear yeah, out here. Yeah, there we go. Um, this is my my f- sitting on the front porch costume because it's cold outside. Jeez, mm-hmm. um, I can't quite wear my my mask. Oh. It, it's all in enco- all encompassing. It's yes. uh, full latex. Mm-hmm. Um, That's cool. Yeah. It was on the set of, but was not in production of Halloween three. Oh really? Nice. Wow. Oh, so that's one of the 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 masks that kills kills the children. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, <laughs> oh, well, you sound so excited by that, Brett. <laughs> it's one of the masks that kills kids. Uh, okay. So it's a uh, dumb. Where the cockroaches and, and stuff come pouring out of their eyes. And, stuff like yeah. <laughs> and this whole thing is um, close in the dark. Ooh, cool. Oh. Wow. So, so where'd show... you snap that up from? Yeah. I, a, a friend gave it to me, mm. and we were really young when he gave it to me, so I don't think he really quite realized. I didn't realize, obviously, this was mm. many decades ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Many, many um, moons ago. Many, many, many moons ago. I was probably 10 or 11 when I got this. Wow. And, uh, Dang. And, or, That's or cool. you know, thereabouts or whenever, you know, shortly after Halloween 3 after mm. it came out. Yeah. And, um, He's a performer, and actually, he's been in that uh, Netflix show, Lily Hammer. He's been on, um, mm. on David Letterman. Walt Frazier is his name. Yeah, cool. And um, this, I just learned the other day, is um, worth some money. And I didn't realize that because oh. it was sitting in the back of my closet. <laughs> and I'm like, going, that's, that's not how 300 plus dollars should be kept. Nice. So uh, wow. it will be put in a proper receptacle after tonight. We well, not. why not? Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> it's yours things. to collect. I mean, <laughs> if you if you want to wear it as a cod piece, you could. <laughs> yeah. Too much fun with this mask. There we go. All right, exactly. Um, All right, so you guys were talking about Helsing. Yes, we're 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 going to talk about. We're going to talk um, about talk about VHD. Um, let me go ahead and Vampire Hunter D. That is the one. Let me go ahead and pull up the spoiler alert notices so folks know what we're talking about. On this and... Halloween Eve. Exactly. <laughs> Look at that. I had all I had three kids tonight. Really? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Three. Mm-hmm. And boy, we're just talking about that. Boy, were they happy because I gave out fistfuls <laughs> of candy. Oh, I still have yeah. a candy cauldron packed with candy, so I'm gonna give it to work. work. I'll have to give it away everywhere I can find. I gave some to the post carrier when they came by. Nice. I'm like, here, please take candy. <laughs> uh, I used to give out full size candy bars. Oh, yeah, I was that really, guy. Really you were the that. myth and the legend, yeah. So, um the, the first year I gave out candy, I got, like, 12 kids. By the last year, I got, like, 50. Because <laughs> they, they all knew, you know, and they were just, you know, they, Word gets around. Yep, they, they told their kids. Their <laughs> I wonder if I should do that. It works. It works. Um, although you well, see, do have to 
tell the younger kids you can't take fistfuls of full-size candy bars. Like, that's not cool. Well, I nothing is unmonitored. Like, I that mm-hmm. some of those people as a kid that they would leave, like, candy on the porch and be like, take one. Mm-hmm. Be like, Okay, I don't trust children. (laughs) I'm going to be there to monitor their candy intake. Mm -hmm. But, you know, living um, in in the South, Mm -hmm. that there are a tremendous number of churches within, Mm -hmm. like, you know, stone's Uh, throw of any given place. mm -hmm. And they all do trunk or treat now. That's the thing. Ah, yeah. And, Uh, again, rather than walking 10 blocks, which was the point, Mm. Kids mm-hmm. are, you know, they're ultimately in the end pragmatic about their acquisition of sugary mm-hmm. treats. <laughs> so, you know, they're like, hmm, a parking lot the size of a half an acre with 50 cars or 10 blocks that maybe 20 houses are participating. Mm. Hmm. I'll take their lock solid guarantee on the cars. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yep. They bring out the pillowcases and they're just like, just, just, yeah. just do it. Just yeah. give me. And I think the ones, the three that I had tonight were the ones that they'd finished their run to the trunk or treat. And mm-hmm. now it's like, well, we got a car. We'll just drive around, see where the porch lights are on. Yeah. <laughs> like... See, if I were a kid, I, I would like map out all the trunk or treats. And I would go to like yeah. five, you know? Yeah, because I mean, it doesn't matter if you're a member of that church or not. How right. could they tell if you're in a costume? Exactly. You know what I mean? You're just a kid with a costume. You walk by, they put candy in. It's like, yeah, yeah. shalom. You know? yeah. <laughs> Allah Akbar. You know, hey, they're all good, man. Exactly. You know how many patri is uh, Spiritus Sanctus Philly? No? Oh, there you go. Nice. Hang on. Hang on. Latin there. Cool. Um. Speaking of Cat- Latin, candy knows no boundaries. Exactly. Uh, very true. <laughs> Unless it's peanut allergy. Can't, then, true. Yeah, never mind. You know. um, and speaking <laughs> of which, if you want to be seen as somebody who is contributing, but make sure nobody actually um, takes your candy, it's very simple. Just lay out bowls of circus peanuts or oh. um, um, candy corn. Raisins. Or the raisins. boxes of raisins. The boxes of raisins are the worst. Uh, no question. And they will just sit out there yeah. all night, and then you can just take them back in and throw them away. Um, you know, well, candy worst. corn, you could just recycle endlessly because it sure, never yes. goes bad and nobody ever eats it. So yeah. it's great. Same thing with, oh, great. with uh, circus peanuts. Um, yeah. The, the, Not the so much the, raisins. And the thing about the raisins is that, like, I like raisins. The problem is a box of sun-made raisins has about the juice of a rock left in it. Yep. It's just a solid <laughs> yeah. mass. There's just nothing left in there. And it's like, nah. Yeah, when you open it up and you go, <laughs> and it goes, boom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, yeah. By that point, I might have preferred a single prune. Yeah. Thank you. Hit your toe and you're like, ow. <laughs> like, those yeah. raisins hurt. Uh, I like the people that used to give out dollars. Yeah. And not like paper dollars. Yeah. There used to be um, a house that was near my cousin's. Because I lived in the country, and my cousin lived in the in the city, mm-hmm. and I'd go over to his place, and we canvass all the neighborhoods, and there was this one place every year that gave out Eisenhower silver dollars. Nice, wow! wow. Obviously, not silver by that point in time, right? right? Yeah, yeah buy metal, still, whatever yeah. thing. But they were, yeah. I mean, that was cool. one of those things where you'd go like candy, 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 clunk, change, <laughs> like ooh, real, real heavy metal, like nice. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I used to get um, – there were uh, one or two houses that still did popcorn balls when I was oh, young. Yeah, oh. Yeah, like homemade popcorn Handmade balls. or the ones in the oh, no, little, little bag? Oh, no, handmade. Oh, like they, right. they did it right. And they were – I, you know, I got that one year. It was in a bag. It looked like mm-hmm. a, a striped, like, circus bag. Mm. And it was, like, crimped at the top, and it was popcorn ball. Yeah, nice. popcorn ball. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Um, and, like, you can still buy you – they sell, like, pre-wrapped, pre-made popcorn balls. All right. Um, but, yeah, and, and this was, you know, a – Someone in the neighborhood. So we, you know, oh, it's you. We, we trust you. We know what you're doing. Right. You know, um, it wasn't like, well, let's make the popcorn <laughs> balls. Oh, yeah. it's to be fine. You know, I, I was lucky. I was lucky. I, you know, my house was the house that gave out the raisins and the healthy candy. Oh, oh curse you. Yeah. Here, here well, celery Oh, you go to hell. <laughs> there was a reason for it. It had to do with me. 
and my you know you know you give me enough sugar back then and it would just be like the tasmanian devil and i'm just you know <laughs> they're just like oh the gearhart kid's at it again jesus mm. is, is he is, is he got to slow down oh he took out the mailbox that's great okay <laughs> You know, but uh, but it, so uh, my family was the only family that did that. But so I was fortunate with you know going to the other places, and 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 there was that one person who did the the handmade uh, popcorn balls, and they were they were actually the things that we ate while we were yes, because that, that mm-hmm. you know that was that was a really good thing to have, mm-hmm. and yep. um, it's healthy when we used to yeah. <laughs> healthy. Hey, it's popcorn. <laughs> um, but we had the histamines crammed into that. <laughs> oh, <I'm> freaking <laughs> out. So, so, but what we did is that uh, because it was the neighborhood was so large back in Gettysburg, it was actually about two or three neighborhoods combined into mm-hmm. one. So we would actually go into have a uh, someone actually use their their lawnmower, riding lawnmower, and they would pull parts of kids oh, behind them. Oh, cool! Wow! And so wow! We would <laughs> So we hired in and we go, and so, you know, you knew, you knew what was going to happen because you could hear the, you know, like the ominous, you know, <laughs> you know, lawnmower coming up the street and, and, you know, there's somebody there and they're just like at the coolie with the beer can and they're just like going, okay, kids go hurry up. <laughs> Nowadays awesome. you would have so fast the police on your ass. Oh, <laughs> Yep. You're operating a vehicle that's not licensed for road use. <laughs> and, and, and the right. adult will probably be like, we can outrun them, kids. It's okay. <laughs> I'm just going to pull the oh, mowing God. deck up and then put it into <laughs> three. <laughs> Here we go. 15 miles an hour. <laughs> or like Lupin, you have the little you know thing that runches out. Whoosh! <laughs> 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 Hit the oh, nitro! Hit the nitro! <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm sure at Rocky Races at some point there was a, a lawnmower with a nitro mower. Oh, that wouldn't <laughs> surprise me. No. But it is Halloween. It is hey. time for us to talk about something. And happy Halloween all. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween indeed. Indeed. And today we're going to talk about a very Halloween-y movie. Vampire Hunter oh, yeah. D from 1985. Um... Based on a series of light novels, uh, which surprises a lot of folks, because um, it is a very yeah, they're not very light. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a very light novel, and it's, but it's a light novel. And it's such a visually gothic sort of a storyline. Oh, yeah. you'd, you'd expect it's based on your know, manga or a set of illustrations or something, um, but nope. Uh, uh, definitely very much uh, based on a long series of light novels. Um, and so this is obviously just one little little chunk of that, and kind of nicely uh, cut off bit of that um, that, yeah. that long story. Um, and so um, first off, if you're going to watch this, be aware um, there are shots in here that I cannot show on YouTube. Um, oh, it's one of those films. Yes, um, there's there, there's there, there. First off, I mean to talk about panty shots. <laughs> I don't think this girl ever stops showing her panties. Stops um, showing panty shops. Yeah. Well, that, that uh, skirt really is just like a <laughs> dust fringe. Yes, it's, it's not yeah. actually a skirt. Yeah, like a four-inch <laughs> skirt. Um, yeah. And uh, a lot of a lot of blood, a lot of gore, a lot of you know people things getting chopped in half. So just be ready yes. for that. Um, let's talk a little bit about the just that those overall sort of visuals, the visual style um, um, of this because it is very. Distinctive and it kind of hits you right off the bat with the visual style because it is pretty stylized all the way through. How did you guys like? What did you guys think of it, sort of just visually? Well, so let me put it this way: literally, the copy I watched had no English; it had only <laughs> Japanese, and I gained essentially like maybe five percent more information than I already had when I watched it the first time. Uh, now I watched it with, mm, with sub. Yeah. It and, and that's what really surprises me to say that it came out of a light novel because the visual interpretation of what they did, mm-hmm. it translates uh, like amazingly well with absolutely no translation. Yeah, you know what I mean, it just visually yeah. you can follow the story entirely, mm-hmm. and then having you know now the translation available, it's like oh okay, I already figured out who the bad guy was. I already figured mm-hmm. out who the good guy was. I already figured out even those weird 
little things that were in the field that mm-hmm. kept the sheep, the the mutant sheep, safe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> the crosses made total sense. I had no idea yep. that the pillar things were garlic emitters. But uh, I figured that, right. you know what I mean? And that's part of the 5%. It's like, I knew they were a thing, mm-hmm. and it was anathema to I the mean, vampires or werewolves or whatever, mm-hmm. and that destroying them, you know, got got some result i mean when you mm-hmm. see her flip the switches off i'm like oh okay yeah. so it's it's an anti-monster electric fence that does mm-hmm. something yep. so it's like you know oh. wow amazing it's very it's very good on their part to have made something that stands up that you could turn off all the audio mm-hmm. and follow the story entirely yeah and it's like that's pretty good i mean that's that's hard to do yeah totally yeah there was there was no no problem with <clears throat> following, like you say, following the story. I mean, uh, you could literally have nothing there and just be able to. The minutia you might not be able to pick up, like the fact that it was garlic emi- right. emitters, but, but otherwise, you know, good guy, bad guy, damsel in distress, yep. helpful guy, bad guy. Mm-hmm. Why is there a face on his paw? But okay, we'll just accept <laughs> that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Which, I mean, honestly, just, we and, don't learn yeah. that either in this. True. <laughs> you know I mean? like, you know, actually, actually, you, just, you don't learn it at you all. You just accept it no, and you yeah. move on with your life. Mm-hmm. Well, apparently in the novels, it's not even well explained. Oh wow! Um, it's you know uh, that there's no there's as of yet there's no story as to that explains how that hand face hand gets in there and and it's actually considered where they where they call it. it actually has a name called left hand. Okay. That's what they call it hmm. throughout the series. Kidari? Uh, Tam, but they don't really... Maybe, I, I don't know, they, but... It, Migi, it's... Migi is right, Hidari is left. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's called Hidari. Because okay. think about Parasite, the maximum. Mm. His, oh, yeah, his yeah, yeah, hand, yeah, yeah. right hand, was infected. Was so a... he called it Migi. Right. Mm-hmm. So righty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so the, the thing that threw me about this, this particular anime was that... <clears throat> there were parts of the animation that I thought were really kind of cool and, you know, kind of very detailed and stylized. And then there was really weird movement. Yeah. For some of the, for some of the, for some of the, like the horses. I'm like, I'm like, mm-hmm. the horses mm-hmm. don't walk like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're all but, robo horses. Uh, so so that. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, um, but, but it was pretty neat and it was just, it was just kind of interesting. And again, you kind of had to, read into it a little bit and even the the you know the the dub you don't really get a whole lot as to why he's always covered up mm. and you don't you kind of figure it out by the end but the apparently the light novels talk more about it in detail mm. you know with with the whole you know facing and, and everything the but, dun uh, peel existence versus a, a strict human or strict vampire right mm. right and um but the, the the view of it was it was kind of interesting. So some of the, some of it I was just like, okay, that's pretty cool. And some of it I was just like, huh, really? Mm-hmm. Like at the end when you know the the castle is yeah sinking, yeah. you know sinking, mm-hmm. and and there's that, and I'm just like going, I know this is supposed to be epic, <laughs> but this is and and I know it's pre Akira, so I know it's not mm-hmm. gonna be this like you know big orchestra mu- music going on here. But then there was this like almost like 2001 Odyssey thing going on in the sky where they were trying to for these different effects, and I'm just like going, mm. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really work for me. Yeah. It, it just, you, see, you could you could have done like, 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 the, like, the uh, Akira you... sound, <laughs> yeah. just have it sink, sink, like that could have made your day. Anybody watching it with you would have been like, "You're insane, Steve." Yeah, but, <laughs> so, but but there were but there were great but there were great like little shots I loved, yeah. like you know like that, that made me laugh. Uh, I totally forgot about this one scene because uh, where you know the the noble vampire is sitting there and suddenly he's he's about to bite into her neck and then I'm like, "Oh, knife in your eye," you know? Yeah. <laughs> so <it's> just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I love how he just like like they were just so loving and how he's pulling it out. At, and yeah. he doesn't even flinch. He just kind of goes, "Oh, it's you." Mm-hmm. I'm like going, "Okay, if I had a knife to eye, I'd be like you know on the ground." I'm, ah! mm-hmm. But you know, and he and he lovingly but pulls it out and the eye so comes out. Interesting. Like, yeah, yeah and it sucks back in, and it's great. It's actually really good animation. I thought. Oh, it's but fantastic. The animation is after the 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 effect. 
you have this yeah. most mm-hmm. incredibly flat effect before the knife, and then the mm-hmm. knife goes in, and it's like, as opposed to being more realistic, which they tried to do with some of the splattering and things kind of squishing out and stuff, mm-hmm. his eye, it's just like it's bisected his pupil, and it's yeah. just sticking out of his eye. <laughs> yep. Versus even a vampire, there would be that moment of like, Right, and then then he'd right. be like, oh, and then it would heal up. But it's like yeah. this. It's like you took a flat sheet cell of him and just took literally a knife away. <laughs> there you go. That's it. Well, <laughs> it's like why did you guys like cheap the first part? Yeah, but then you worked well with the second Ooh, part. No. Like yeah. what's going on? And I, I suspect the what they're trying to get across is the fact that he's. Well, I mean, two things. A is to get across how powerfully like held together he is the vampire that like whatever you do to him he just you know his body just is solid and it's not going to bleed or anything but it's also interesting i think just from a pure visual animation perspective because it causes the brain to go wait what like there's a there's a knife there now like yeah, literally, I was like, "Oh, knife in your, you know, just like you know, like, oh, hey, dart in your neck, oh, knife in your knife in your eye." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, knife. Right, yeah, in exactly. Your, yeah. In your eye. Hey, Dracula, yeah. Dracula, Dracula. There's a there's, there's a, a thing. thing. You got a thing right there. Right. That's, yeah, no, um, to the left, to the left. Yeah, you go. Yeah, and, and I think <laughs> it, it, it has it kind of has power in that way because he's not reacting. You're not yeah, seeing blood not going all. everywhere. He's just oh yeah, that's a thing. Moving right along. Um, <laughs> but no, I, and by the way, folks, that was more or less the sound that happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, they worked hard on getting that noise just mm-hmm. right. <laughs> but no, I, I totally agree. The and it's interesting comparing this to Horace Prince of the Sun and Castle Cagliostro, which has more naturalistic animation, and just how stylized this is in terms of movement. When folks are flying around, like um, it's interesting seeing how, like, when the mutant is 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 flying around, there's no like um, ragdoll physics of the body. He's like, you know, right. he's, he's very stiff. Yeah. Um, and every time people are moving, it's, it's being slammed against every oh, single wall. It's like, yeah, I, I I kept expecting to hear it just like a simple thwap. Yeah, exactly. Thwap. <laughs> Um, it's yeah, almost like he was like in those little spider toys that you throw against the yeah. wall. It's just like creepy crawlers. <laughs> wall. Yeah. crawlers. Uh, yeah, no, it's 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 interesting because I, I think this is a, a movie where um, it feels much more, you know, storyboard to anime, if that makes sense. Like you can see how they were like, okay, we'll have this shot and this shot and this shot. Yeah. And they kind of animated that without more yeah. of a sense of like – um, of flow of cinematography, if you will. Um, but that kind of heightens the unreality of it in its own way. It makes it feel kind of weird and, and off-putting um, in a way yes. that, that horror should. Um, much well, like I mean, music, but very... that's, that's a neat you know element to it that you get these sort of cuts that just happen. You know, yeah, you're right. you're looking at the sheep getting eaten by this like crazy <laughs> sparkly mist. Mm-hmm. Kids shooting at it. Then like bam, edit. You're off to somewhere else. Yeah. And then, you know, you yeah. snap back to somewhere else and it's just like, okay, I kind of get the the snap editing and mm-hmm. how you're just sort of sh- you're rapidly shifting to keep somebody you're not you're not a slowly plotting through what's going on. You're mm-hmm. rapidly shifting right. from things where yeah. when the knife comes to the eye, you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you yeah. get the all of a sudden you're in a castle, all of a sudden you're in like a large manufacturing pipe yeah. kind of industrial facility mm-hmm. and then you're back to like something that, you know what I mean, it's just like yeah. oh, uh, okay, yeah. it feels like it's purposely in a lot of the choices for the visuals trying to keep you off balance so mm-hmm. that you're not you're not sort of locked into yeah. a channel yet. You can understand yeah. the, the where the story's going, but at the same time, it's just like it snaps back and around to things where you're like, mm-hmm. um, okay, what? Yeah. What did I see? Yeah, it really for, – for, for me, I felt I was just like, ooh, neck, ow, whiplash. You know, because some <laughs> yeah. of the transitions yeah, they got. They go on the farm now. They're in the gorge, and the local yokel is thrown over the and, side of the, mm-hmm. the thing. And the doctor. And the little brother looks like – yeah, the doctor. And the, and the little brother looks like a thumb with a face. Um, 
that and that's one thing I, I you know why could they not get him right that was interesting i mean the the, the little boy i mean let's be honest he looks like every little boy in 1980 anime um, yep. and he just feels so so is the place. girl I mean well, that's on. true yes <laughs> yeah um, yeah that's true Dracula's daughter and her they yeah. it's very prototypical 1980s heroine mm-hmm. yeah I um, mean as in show. female hero not yeah, heroine yeah, no, 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 no. um <laughs> just so we're clear yeah exactly um <laughs> but it, I mean you can totally tell and I'm I'm just gonna say it um it very much feels like they tried to stay as close as possible to Yoshitaka Amano's art for D. And then they went just very sort of modern for the time anime character designs for like the girl yeah. and the boy and other stuff. Um, um, oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And well, I think, again, I, think the, I think the little brother, no offense, I, th- I think he got cheaped out on the animation. Yeah, it's true. Very yeah, I mean, much so. Because he was from. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it just, there wasn't, he didn't have a super critical part and he was not super obvious a lot, everything going on. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, let's put our assets where they belong. We'll Which is a shame. It was I mean, thing. Because, like, they, they, they <laughs> build him up at the beginning. Like, he yeah. has a nice, you know, yeah. story arc building up, but it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> oh, kid, I mean, move I, over I, there. <laughs> I mean, honestly, he reminded, for those of you who watch Venture Brothers, it, he reminded me very much of Quiz Boy. The head was so Quiz much larger. Boy. Quiz Boy. Chris and boy, we, yes, of course. He's the macrocephalic child that is a genius who works with Mr. White for conjectural technologies. Yes. I'm fairly familiar with him. But, but, but the head was so big, that's what it kept reminding me of. And it was just mm. like, there was a scene, there were a couple scenes where they, they had him sleeping in the bed, and it's yeah. just like, like the body looked like that of a toddler, but then he had this humongous head. And it's just like, <laughs> and it's like, um, <laughs> like, yeah, right. It's just like, going, uh, okay. Mm. Yeah, but but you know he had the Shane moment at the end, so you know mm-hmm. all was well for him. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Mr. <laughs> Mr. D, we love you. <laughs> Mr. D, come oh, back. that ending! That Every ending. D, come back! Come back, <laughs> D. We love you. So it's interesting because you get this, and, and <clears> I actually <throat> also I, I want to say I really like what they did with Doris. Um, it is very easy in a story like this to make her the classic um, 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 damsel, in, damsel distress. in distress. Thank you. And yeah. you know they very much establish that she can hold her own, she can do all this stuff, but not against a ten thousand year old vampire. Um, and it just there's you know, no. And so that's why she needs the help of the hero. Um, and it and it puts her in kind of a, a, this, this nice interesting place. Not just in terms of story, but also in terms of like the town and the villagers, where you know you can understand why she's able to keep up the farm and do all that kind of stuff. Um, that you know, it's so often in these stories to have this sort of wilting flower who is also living out on her own and yeah. is able to do all that stuff. And it's like, well, how? Eh. Um, but she feels like a you know a a um, well thought out character in that sense um and then of course she gets sort of you know hypnotized and brought in and did anyone else think castle cagliostro in this by the way like big evil villain guy big castle you know blonde haired girl all that you know the whole wedding sequence like i don't think it was intentional necessarily but it did have a little bit of a cagliostro-ish vibe to it I didn't get a Nausicaa feeling, a Cagler Oster feeling at all. This <laughs> at all. That's, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> um, Don't go there. Exactly. Um, uh, yeah. Miyazaki never steals from himself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> exactly. Um, if you're going to steal, steal from the best. If you have to steal from the best, are. you steal from yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right there. <laughs> totally. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about D as a character. Because uh, on the one hand, like as an 80s sort of horror action villain i think they did a a pretty good job of making him interesting or making him not boring to watch i'll put it that way um but also like there's just not that much there to him i think he's a man of few words yeah (laughs) say the least (laughs) um thank you thank you thank you but uh 
No, it, it, you know, one of the things was um, you learn when you read into it, like, you know, how powerful he actually is. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you first watch the, the anime, uh, the movie, you're going to first think you misheard Dampier. Mm-hmm. I had to replay that just mm-hmm. to make sure that I heard it correctly. Because mm-hmm. I was just like, damn, Pierre, what, what the hell? Uh, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. what, what is that? And you come to learn later on that's a union between, you know, um, vampires and regular people, and they actually can have children in this world. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's, it, and, but again, he's of very few words, and, you know, he's your prototypical, I think, you know, cowboy kind of guy. Like, I, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I spoke. Clint Eastwood in him. I saw, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. The man with no name, you know, a lot of Western. <clears throat> to me, this had a very strong Western vibe. Oh, true. Uh, to From it. his I, duster you know, to his big hat. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. And, but, you know, what was interesting is that his own personal animation to me was very blocky. Like, like, yeah. you know, it's like a very, mm-hmm. you know, and, then, and his movements were very. Um, I don't want to say precise, but it was just like very calculated and like very limited. He really didn't have that much movement in this movie. Yeah. In terms of of fighting and stuff like that. It was always a calculated position and then he'd do his thing and then the person would die a most horrific bloody death or get their hand cut off or whatever. Mm -hmm. I actually thought the most interesting character was the mutant Ray, but we can talk about him later. But, Mm -hmm. but, the vampire, vampire hunter D. You know, you get nothing. Yeah. From the from the movie, you get you get no backstory. You get very little. Like pretty much the the bad vampire, pretty much it has to explain what D is. Yeah. Right. Hey, mm-hmm. vampire. The only the only part that you get from him is when he almost succumbs to his bloodlust. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know. By the way, very interesting shot that that kind of sends him over the edge. Yeah, I we'll love that, that actually. <laughs> I'm, just kind of that I'm, that just like, I'm just like, I'm just like, that's a detail you normally don't. Yeah, get. exactly. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, totally. Well, and, I, and I thought for the the sort of you know monolithic function of of D mm. in you I, know that he is blocky and sort of you know the way he is that that you get that sense of his sort of the weight mm-hmm. that he has. And so yeah. you don't find out about his transformative capacities. You know, mm-hmm. something's weird with the hand, you know, yeah. there's something distinctly different about him. And it's only through hindsight that you kind of go back and you're like, Oh, that's why he's like so rigid mm-hmm. is because he is aware in himself that snap of a finger, he could lose right. the whole show he could just go completely off the reservation and go nuts Mm -hmm. so every minute is about maintaining absolute control of himself yeah but that you only get to see that in the last few minutes of the film Mm -hmm. looking back and like okay i watched all this stuff and he was really wooden oh he's wooden for a reason Mm -hmm. i get this now yeah (laughs) and credits damn it well it's interesting (laughs) because you know um like modern hollywood has very much moved away from the interesting villain you know, most villains are very simple, while the heroes are much more complex and interesting because that's who you're spending time with. But it was, you know, the classic model is that you know, the villain was the most interesting person to, to play because he was the most complex character. Um, and and I completely agree, Steve. I think, I think um, Lee, as a villain, <laughs> I mean, he's, he's just kind of there. Um, just all-powerful. <laughs> um, is the mutant that really um, became the, the, the much more interesting antagonist. Yeah. Yeah. He, um, he had the most to lose. Yep. So, I mean, I mean, you, you guys, everyone had something to lose in this, but it felt like, like he had the agenda of what he was going mm-hmm. for, which was mortality. Yeah. Yep. And then, yeah, there's that wonderful scene where he goes, where the, you know, the, the, the master vampire goes, don't even bring this up to me again for another 50 years. Mm-hmm. And then you realize that he means don't talk to this movie about me, about this for another 50 years. Mm-hmm. And Ray the Mutant is like sitting there just going, oh, Jesus, another 50 years. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. He'll be like 70. Mm-hmm. Oh, the hell? Right, you know? It, he's just like, <laughs> so anyway. 
But, you know, he has these, as a mutant, he has these interesting powers. Like, the one power he only uses once where he stabs him. Mm-hmm. And he's able to warp time so that he's able to yeah. stab me back, which was I thought was very interesting. Yeah. The blade looked really unwieldy, but it just had really nice graphics to it when it was being used. Mm-hmm. Um, and he just had a story, a story that you were just like, okay, yeah. okay. And after a while you maybe not grew sympathetic with him, but you, you definitely had a set of a little bit of empathy for the guy. Cause you know, he's, I just want to be immortal. Okay. Yeah. If I have to kill a whole bunch of people, but you know, I just want to be immortal. That's where I'm not getting the empathy, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll kill as many people as I need to just to become immortal. But, 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 you know, he, 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 sort of, he sort of redeems himself when he saves the thumb of a kid. As as the kid is falling <laughs> yeah. off the pipes, and and he saves the kid, and he just kind of goes, okay, I'm just going to do my thing now, and then he gets, yeah, you know, gets that death by well. wall slapping, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> death by wall slapping, yeah. Um, it, it's also interesting in this movie, just in general, the um, the way it establishes its um, its enemies and so the, the the raising stakes, the rising stakes. Um, the typical thing in these movies is okay who, who's your good guy who's your bad guy how do you establish how powerful the good guy is you know you send a random bad guy against the good guy and then you know that happens then you establish the bad guy by sending a random person against the bad guy and he wipes the floor with, the good, with that person so you're establishing power levels and I think this movie is interesting because it um, uh, it does that in ways that are kind of unexpected <coughs> where you know, the first, I, I honestly thought Ray was going to die in that first scene with, with D mm-hmm. because, you know, he faced off against D and, um, uh, you know, D would do something and ha 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 and then kill, you know, kill Ray. Um, but no, like Ray's a formidable antagonist for D um, and it becomes a, a thing overall. And you have the um, uh, uh, Lee's daughter, um, the, the, vampire princess girl yeah um who looks like she's going to be the big you know the, the, the lieutenant basically you know it's going to be ray and then her and then the the senior vampire no like she never does anything really she like manipulates she you know does all sorts of different stuff but she never really attacks anyone directly um and and the head vampire guy lord lee whatever his name is mm-hmm. um he says to her, you know, oh, you know, you're you're not a full blooded vampire. Your mother was a human right. too. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, yep. wait a minute. And boy, so, she does not take that. No, well. she does not. No. But that makes her a dumb peer as well. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, right. and yet here we have D, who is, you know, human mother, vampire father, mm-hmm. and is, you know, sickly powerful with all these things. And she arguably could be, and she does nothing. She mm. she becomes more like the helpless heroine who needs somebody to like give her a hand. Yeah, you know, manipulating things. But presumably, she's should she have that same kind of powers? Mm. He does in the novels. In, in the novels, she does not. Which is weird. You right, when you're a vampire in the novels, apparently it, the, the the outcome you want is a vampire father and a human mother. Okay. Um, no, it's, yeah, is is that vampire father, human mother, right? Okay. Yeah, vampire uh, mother. Okay, no, no, sorry, I got, I got it wrong. But apparently, there is if you like, there are there, there are actual different power power levels. It depends on who your father is. Gotcha. If your father is human, then you don't have as much power. Then if your father mm-hmm. is vampire, then you get a lot more power. So yeah, you're right. It, it, she would have arguably the same amount of power as, mm-hmm. as Dan Pierre. But in the novels, it's never clear if, and there's a, a, a one moment where Lee kind of goes, is it possible that D is a descendant from the sacred ancestor who is Count Dracula? Ah, and mm-hmm. in, in the novels, there's gotcha. that question is kind of uh, left kind of unsaid mm. but it's kind of leaning towards that well, it, it is well what's interesting and i'm sure this is dealt with in the novels in some way is that you know um dracula would be a more recent um well maybe not because we don't know how far in the future it is um, right Ten thousand one hundred ninety a.d oh there we go okay joking not joking yeah. <laughs> well, I, was, I was gonna say uh, and yet that 
that classic uh, 17th century oil painting of Dracula. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it lasted for thousand years. Amazingly. <laughs> uh, funny that. Um, uh, yeah, because I was going to say that, that would make Lee older than Dracula, um, but we don't know. So, um, no. yeah, interesting. Um yeah. Well, I just I I thought the son of the of the original or the originator, mm-hmm. the the progenitor. Yeah. Boy, do you just, you know, maybe it was me, but it's like again, it felt like a very Judeo-Christian thing thrown in there. You're like, mm. "Oh, if you want to say that the head vampire, the first vampire is like the god of vampires, then <laughs> you're the son of god." Oh boy, mm. here we go again. <laughs> here we are. Yeah, the world is actually an upside down ship floating in the sea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't get that sense personally, um, and I don't know the the author's you know religion. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but uh, apparently Christianity gets thrown into things regardless of whether anybody is a Christian or not. True. Yeah. <laughs> How many people go to St. Gloria, Gloriana Academy and they're, they're wearing crosses and they go, they have a church, <laughs> stained glass windows, and the person writing it like has never been in one. <laughs> like, okay. Mm. Cool. Um, but yeah. Um, Religion as theater. Well, yeah. Exactly. Aww. Um, Aww. Uh, well, and that's actually an interesting thing here, too. I mean, you know, uh, a lot of crosses. Right, like they, they 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 rely very yeah. heavily on on that idea, which conceptually, and there have certainly been vampire stories in the past. I forget which one I, I read with her, where someone's like, "Why would a holding up a certain shape make a difference? Make a difference yeah. like that makes no Thanks. sense whatsoever." Um, it's again very much a sort of a religious, uh, you know, thing thrown onto there. Yeah, and I, I wonder. I mean, Steve, I don't know if you know this. Um, does that have an effect in that world of Amber Hunter D? Cross. Crosses. Well, you see, you see the werewolves make, taking great care to remove right. the cross from her yeah. neck yeah. Before, yeah. Before, before, before he shows up. Mm-hmm. So there is some power to it, but I would imagine that it's probably the, the old um, – a formula of how much do you believe mm-hmm. um you know in, in in your religion so if you're if you're <laughs> there's one book series about uh, uh about vampires where the the woman protagonist says a cross isn't going to do you much good against a vampire if you're an atheist mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. you know kind of yeah. a thing so I, you know maybe there's there's that thrown in there That's and true. lee could be so powerful that it really doesn't matter now mm-hmm. what's interesting is in in the books this <laughs> it's, it's good the books are so different yeah. um apparently uh, the the mankind is bred genetically to not remember that garlic is a thing and that crucifixes are a thing and that there are weaknesses to vampires so that in the books in the light novels uh, they don't know they, they, they okay. have a genetic memory lapse of of not knowing uh. that Okay. So they don't know to do that. Mm. And, you know, going back to, you know, keeping the painting fresh mm. after 10,000 years, the, apparently the vampires in this world knew the nuclear war was coming and they actually made these castles underground so that once the war happened, wow. they would come up and they would restructure the whole world. And that's where gotcha. the world of Vampire Hunter D comes from. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. The vampire, so the vampires <laughs> took over. And they coexisted with human beings, mm-hmm. and in the novels, but not in the anime, they actually have blood that they make themselves to to use as as oh. sustenance. Okay. But they prefer fresh, yes, yeah, mm-hmm. of, of course. So, um, but yeah, so there's it, it's kind of like what translates from the book and in, in, mm-hmm. from the books into the into the anime, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Some of it does, some of it doesn't, because like. As John, as you were pointing out, it took me a while to figure out that, that those were, you know, whatever they were emitting, you know, mm. stuff out to keep vampires yeah. away. Yeah. And, and you know, if you, and I didn't know that prior to reading up on, you know, the backstory of how this was made and everything. So when I right. discovered that there was this whole light novel series mm. behind this before the anime and the manga were made, I was just like going, oh my God, it's like this whole other world. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you can't stuff all that into a movie. So exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so, well, one of the, one of the things you're talking about the the pure symbol of of the cross itself mm-hmm. is 
this doesn't have the time to go into the fact that you can make a cross out of sticks mm. and in traditional vampire lore that doesn't do crap for you it has to be right. consecrated uh, right. so it has to be a mm. blessed cross of, and you can have a blessed cross made of sticks mm -hmm. But it has to be a blessed cross. You can't right. just go out and be like, put two things together in a cruciform and be like, go away! Because then the vampire will walk up and be like, cool, I got something to eat you with. Chopsticks. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, I usually use a fork, but I'll use chopsticks exactly. today. Exactly. Um, but, yeah, no, it, it's... Um, and it's one of the things that I think gives the movie um, just a little more uh, depth and complexity is having those images that they don't explain, but they yeah. clearly have a purpose. Um, and it just makes and that's what goes so well to this, as I said, mm -hmm. where it's like you could watch this entirely with no sound and no translation and get every part of it because mm -hmm. it really is visually, right. you know, falls very in yeah. line with everything that you understand about that's those mm -hmm. symbols. And you can infer a tremendous amount from everything else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, ah, cool. Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, it is a very visual film. Yep. Um, including all the horrible, gory monsters that... Uh, that come out of nowhere. This is another odd thing for me. The movie felt very much like a video game at times. Because <laughs> just he's going through the castle, you know, random monster shows up, attacks him, you know, and then goes away. Uh, and then another monster shows up and goes away. Um, and it's right. just... Okay. Was, was, it, was it the ghost jaguar, the witch? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. The, the flying, and the, the only thing that Hall fly the monsters, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah, the golem. Well, yeah. The golem cracked me up, by the way. <laughs> I, I love, and I love the fact that, again, it's one of those things where nobody stands there and says, look, there is a golem that was created by magic that does ABC and XYZ. It just stands there and says, golem, <laughs> yeah. over and Gold. over. And oh. so if you know what that means, you know what it is. Um, it's just good storytelling. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, it's, yeah, it did feel like a video game. Like you were going through levels. Like the, the, the saliva monster hall was one level. And mm -hmm. then you went to the third level boss, which was the witch or the ghost yeah. jaguar or whatever. The, the, the siren. Yeah. The, yeah. The, yeah, the and, and, yeah. Which I cannot show you. Oh, bye. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah yeah they have hair yes they do that's all they got um but uh yeah it, it's uh, and okay and I, I i gotta bring this up because i'm sorry this is worth worth mentioning um but like okay these things are typically like you know, teen boy power fantasies right these movies are kind of aimed at that demographic um and i want to be d and slay monsters mm-hmm I'm going to go then, buy the limited edition D sword. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have the scene with the the three um, uh, Lamia women, basically, who uh, proceed to um, drain his life essence. wonder what that's a euphemism for. Um, mm -hmm. But his stamina <laughs> is so strong that he outlasts them. And you know they're they're unable to, to, to keep on because he's they, they've been going for oh for half a day, and boy he just can't. And I'm like, he took a magical blue saying. pill. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very thinly thinly veiled uh, male, male fantasy, isn't it? Yeah, um, that's fine. Yeah, exactly. To the degree agree that Lamia women are a male fantasy, but I understand it's a substitute for other things. I yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a whole, it's a whole thing. Um, it's a thing. Yeah, but it was kind of funny that they were like, okay, yeah, you, you went there. Um, um, but, yeah. It's also... Um, um, let me see, see here. Um, was there, I thought there was something else I wanted to bring up. Oh, yeah, the ending. <laughs> um... Please come back. So we love you. they, yeah. So they destroy the the vampire, and then which causes the castle to collapse because you know fantasy, anime, horror, right? Like that's just what happens. Yeah. Like, whatever. <clears throat> um, and then you know we get like this three minute scene of so the, the the day turns into the night and the night into, into the day. 
and all this stuff happens and then suddenly we're in um bavaria <laughs> um and it's just all you know it's all green and light and beautiful and i gotta say like there's a part of me that really likes that aspect of the ending um that loves the idea that you've seen this world and then it is literally like the 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 willpower of that vampire is making it into this dark gothic horrible place and when he's gone everything's back to normal this is how things should be um it's again sort of a very gothic thing um um but the boy it comes out of nowhere lifted from the land yeah exactly um but it's just kind of like that's not where i thought this movie was going like wow weird um, well, I kind of, I kind of <laughs> doubt the sparkly mist that likes to eat the ro- the mutant Robo sheep. I, I'm kind of, <laughs> sort of doubting that that's just gone away mm-hmm. because you know, I mean, though the werewolves perhaps be mm-hmm. as servitors of the vampire, but would the little sparkly mist thing necessarily be a servant beast to a vampire? What you know, what's mm-hmm. the what's the point there? Yeah, but yeah, it's like hmm, I, okay. <laughs> All things, all things evil are gone. The land is cleansed. Mm-hmm. So, but is yeah, the sparkly no. mist evil? It. it could have kids at home that it's trying to feed. Exactly. It could be working two jobs just to try to make <laughs> ends meet. Did anybody stop to think about what the mist is doing with itself? Huh. That's very one-sided first-world thinking, exactly. Steve. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shamed. I'm shamed. Terrible. Yeah. You know, did you guys like like how did what did you guys think of the, that ending? Um, I thought it was oddly quick but long at the same time. Like, <laughs> you know, it was like it was like okay, it, it's like we, we see the brightness and the color, and and you know the spirit comes back to land, whatever. Mm-hmm. And D's going off on his own, and it it just seemed like okay, we get it, mm-hmm. and so there's a quick resolution, but yeah. then it just draws out with with D just riding his horse and. Just his make robo horse and, mm. and just going off in the distance with you know people screaming at him from a cliff that <laughs> I didn't waving. know. Waving, yeah. 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 Yes, and it went on, and I'm just like going. She should have just knocked him, <laughs> knocked the kid off the cliff, like bam. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 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 But it, 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 you know, it, I just think it, it just took it took a little too long. But I, 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 I wanted exposition, I guess. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of wanted some type of exposition that would say, you know, for this part of the world, you know, things are getting back to where they should be. Right. And I wanted something more along the some type of exposition for Vampire Hunter D to mm-hmm. go on to the next yeah. town, so to speak. You know, why, you know, like, is there somebody who's like, hey, we need help in this other town? Or is this, you know, he just literally rides off into the sunset. Yeah. He feels the, feels the force and goes where the darkness draws him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty much. I, I, I don't mean it in a bad way because I, I it's nice to get to the end and see the it the, the atmosphere lightens mm-hmm. and you feel uplifted yeah. by this ending. It's like, ah, now the horror is done. Oh, what a better what a better day is dawn. Mm-hmm. And I I say this respectfully. It's not my book. It's not my movie. Mm-hmm. It felt like a cheap ass ending. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like you yeah. you take something with the the, the uh, you know pinnacle of horror. You're fighting a ten thousand year old super powerful vampire. This this vampire has been you know ravaging the land and you know plucking people out of the communities at, at his will for his mm-hmm. pleasure because he's so bored with existence, mm-hmm. and you have this you know cataclysmic battle and you've won, and now it's just like right off to the sunset everything's fine. Yeah, there's like wastage of people's lives, mm-hmm. people that have been turned, people that arguably are that are still turned. Are they mm-hmm. now normal? Yeah. Do you are they? mini vampires that survive on so now you have the community has to go kill them you know there's a lot of stuff that's going on that's not just like oh there's birds and sunshine and a big tree and everything's happy like this is a cheap ending and, and, and i'm sure this is not how whichever <laughs> novel this was ended 
Nah. I'm sure they're like, okay, we got yeah. to the end of the storyline. We need an ending for our movie. Here you go. <laughs> the hills are alive. Yeah, exactly. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah. Like, we can't afford that. This is not how that yeah, ends. <laughs> You know, you're just like, you got a point. You're just like going, oh, the poor doctor. Yeah. He was such a nice guy. Mm-hmm. And you know, <clears throat> her, so, yeah, you actually don't get for her, mm. she's been bitten by the guy. Yeah. There's no mention as to whether or not she's completely true. Cured. I mean, you <clears> see her like in that. that shot. She's no longer wearing her. Okay, that's true. That. That's a good point. So, that is a good point. you know, that comes off, but that doesn't, you know, I mean, that's that's kind of one of those things. You did that because you were hiding it from your little mm-hmm. brother, and they point that out. Be like, does yeah. your brother know? Yeah. And it's like, so you could easily say by now, the brother was well aware of what the hell happened. <laughs> so <laughs> she wouldn't need to wear that covering anymore. But, you know, same thing. Yeah. Is she a, is she a vampire? Does she carry that now? Is there something that has to be done about that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it, you know? it, and I think a lot of the movie feels, and again, I don't know, but it felt like they had about 50 minutes of movie and stretched it to an hour and 20. You know? Because um, there's a lot yeah. of sequences of this that is very much, you know, we're establishing the hell out of this field, um, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. And, yeah. uh, and this ending uh, as well just felt like it was, you know, about two to three times as long as it really needed to be for what it was communicating. Um, Yeah. uh, It's funny. I I, I think if they had defeated him and then there were like three or four shots of him riding off, you know, green fields, he's riding off, they're saying goodbye. I would actually be more satisfied with that. I'm like, okay, we don't have time. We're just, you know, land is back to normal. He's leaving fine. But the fact that they dwell on it so much, I'm like, yeah. well, but why didn't you spend time on the other questions? <laughs> Do you love you? Well, I mean, Come back. visually, the the rebirth of the land thing, mm-hmm. the spirit of the land has come yeah. back. Yeah, you, you could have had him ride mm-hmm. with them, drop them off at the farm on the way, mm-hmm. and literally have him riding off into the sunrise. Hey. And then as the sun comes <laughs> up, you see... Mm-hmm. There's D, his shadow begins to, you know, goes from darkness. Right. Then you see the sun come up, his shadow extends backwards towards them. Mm. And then you see the massive greenery, the beautiful tree, yeah. and off he goes. Yeah, mm. I mean, you could have shortened that up entirely versus that your background company, you know, <laughs> that you're, or, 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 or that you you're saying we can guarantee yeah. you that you're going to have this many frames in this project. And here we are. Yep. Do it. Do or, your or, background or, thing. <laughs> Or you could have had more, and, I'm, and I kind of say this half seriously, more input onto Mister yeah. Facepalm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like, you know, you know what 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 his deal is, or maybe as they're walking, you know, as he's going off into the sunrise, mm-hmm. as he's walking off, maybe his hand will be like saying something snarky. Yeah, as as the mm-hmm. people are calling you by D, you know, something, mm-hmm. something, anything, but you don't really get anything out of it other than. Mm-hmm. That seems like a, a really weird wind scar kind of thing from Inuyasha, you know, wind tunnel or yeah. you know, whatever yeah. it was. That remember who had. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, yeah, his little explanation as to why eating dirt makes you get better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Although I, I do want to say I, I literally burst out laughing when he reattached to D and said, oh, this guy's such a handful. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. Like, that's a great line. It's just a great line. Um, but speaking of which, um, did you guys listen to Japanese or English? Dub? Uh, I'm <clears throat> English. Japanese. English dub. Yeah, I, I bounce back and forth between both of them. Um, because I, I listened to the English dub and I like pretty much everyone. Um, and then the uh, princess daughter girl shows up. And didn't really love her voice actress. Um, mm. And so switched over to the Japanese and didn't really love her voice actress there either. Uh, <laughs> um, so I ended up just kind of trying both. Um, and like I didn't particularly find one, you know, amazing versus the other. 
Was um, the kid annoying in in English as as much as he was in Japanese? Um, about the same. Yep. Mm-hmm. Ah, well, good. They, good. they did that well. Then. Yep. I mean, I, I mean, literally at the end, you know, as I'm saying here, come back, they, they, like, he goes in and out of the out of the country western accent. Yes, he during does. The, yeah. During, Y'all oh, come yeah. back yeah. now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's it's like, it's like you know, he's talking normally and he goes, "Oh, ain't that great?" You know, you're just. Like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Just, it's kill me, weird. kill me. Um, <laughs> just, have, just have the mutant kill him. He just have him like werewolf, you know, fodder something. Just have the flying wanna... bat so, dude. Like, speaking the... of which, <laughs> right? Um, I'm surprised at all things considered how low the body count was in this. Um, I was sure the kid was gonna die. Yeah. I was sure the girl was was probably going to be corrupted or something bad was gonna happen. Like something really bad was gonna happen to her. Um. Uh, you know, basically the only people who die are the doctor, which is sad. Doctor, yep. um, yeah. So, but you know, mutant the mayor's guy, son, mayor's mutant son, guy, who's an asshole, son, who we don't really care. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, he had that coming. Yeah, exactly. Um, and mm, I mean, Gaston, basically. Um, and uh, it, it's weird because like. Um, in a way, it's a very traditional sort of thing where all the bad guys die. Um, all the good good guys are fine at the end. Yay! <clears throat> Except for the doctor who, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Except the doctor who was her best friend. Yeah. Oh. And is now at the bottom of the gorge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Coming he's dust. Yeah. True. Um, it's funny. There's... But I just he was how... he was a good looking doctor. One might even say he was gorgeous. <laughs> Sometimes I have to do this. It's, it's been a great time, everyone. I'll see you later. <laughs> it's in my contract. <laughs> but go ahead. Sorry, I've derailed uh, things again. Okay. Sorry. No, sorry. Um, but yeah, no, fun. it's it's uh, uh, yeah, it's an interesting film. Um, anything else you guys wanted to bring up? No, I was just going to say that the, the if you're going to die, if you're a 10,000-year-old vampire, you should die spectacularly, and, and he did so in this, this movie. I just did not realize that if you reached the age of 10,000 or so, give or take, that you would have that much blood inside. Yes! <laughs> he's crucified, so he's crucified. He's literally crucified up against the wall because apparently wall death, death by wall yeah, slapping is a thing. thing in this movie. Yeah. So he's he's crucified up against the wall, and he's just bleeding buckets out mm-hmm. and streaming down. But then to add insult to injury, like the wall just falls over <laughs> and it's crushed with him, and there's just like blood just goes, Bleh. and it's just like mm-hmm. everywhere. And you're just like going, dude, I, do you have another bladder full of yeah. blood? Where, where did this come? from? I think there's from? some sort of interdimensional blood thing going on where he can like, yeah. store pockets of it in another dimension. <laughs> After 10,000 years, he has, like, learned how to compress blood to store it inside <laughs> himself. Yep. Yeah. It was fun, though. It mm-hmm. was fun. Yeah. And if you're in a Halloween type of... Actually, this... You yeah. know what? This was really good fun to watch because it was right before Halloween. And it was something, mm-hmm. you know, you know, neat, fun, different to watch and yeah. put you in the mood. Oh, yeah. You have your vampires. You have your good. Yeah. You have your yeah. vampire thralls. You have, you know... Um, Golems, flying spike creatures. Um, that whole entry hall full of all kinds yeah. of goopy, <laughs> looking scary monsters. Yep. Uh, demon it's horses. Time. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that is Vampire Hunter D. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, biting good time. It's a blast from the past. That's yeah, for sure. it's very true. Yeah. 